Okay, keeping in mind that everything is moving um, faster than what you need um, and that you are actually going to have uh, Wednesday, Thursday, I guess you get just one lesson next week and three lessons this week, uh, just make sure you keep keeping up with the information and that you're asking questions on things you don't understand. But uh, Chapter 2.5 is about scatter plots and what we call lines of regression. Uh, any data with two variables is called bivariate, bi meaning two, variate like variable, so again bivariate data. Uh, the graph is called a scatter plot or a dot plot. Uh, the reason for the name scatter is because bivariate data in real life is really organized neatly depending on the agreement of values or its correlation uh, can range from the values of r equals negative 1 to r equals 1. So uh, looking at a scatter plot you can obviously see that the slope of this scatter plot is positive which means that your r would be anywhere from 0 to, I'm sorry, would be greater than 0 but of course it can't be any bigger than one so again uh, looking at it what you would say is this is kind of together in terms of what's going on but again in this case R would be positive in this case you can see the dots kind of having a more negative slope so in this case your correlation or your R would be negative so this would be a positive correlation this would be a negative correlation and when you look at this there's really no relationship between everything so this would be r equals zero for no correlation whatsoever so pretty much zero means that it, it this the information is really random and the closer you get to one the more organized they are for example r of negative one will look almost like that r of a positive one will look something like that because it's straight but the more wide the information is the more close to zero you get and that's pretty much what you're looking at there um, each correlation that is not zero can be summarized using a line of best fit. This line is used to indicate what would be expected uh, at a certain value. The line of best fit should be placed so it goes through the middle of the data uh, in the graph. So before discussing the line of best fit, let's just grab some scatter plots real fast and see if we can do this. So talking about this when you have depth and temperature, whatever is listed first is your independent variable and will always go here. And whatever is listed second is your dependent variable and we'll go here. You don't need to worry about copying this but just make sure you understand the process that I'm using to do this. See the thing is these numbers need to go as far across these bars as possible. So this is going from 0 to 2000. Obviously I can't go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, if I go by 1000 at 0, 1000, 2000 which means obviously that's going to stop way too early. And so I have to find a distance that is good for getting to 2000. So 0, 500, 1000, uh, 250, 250, 500, 751, 250, 500, 750. So I think that's it. So it'll be zero here and then 1000 here, 2000 there. It doesn't go all the way across the range, but again, we're going in quarters here. So that'll be 500 and this would be 1500. Uh, on your other one, you're looking at a temperature ranging from 6 to 22. Again, you want to use as much as possible. You don't want to go 5, 10, 15, 20 because that will keep you real low. You want to get as high as you can on the um, bar here. So I'm going to see 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Or I can actually start at 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 22, 24, and therefore I have everything I need. In terms of your plot, again, you just go for your depth and the number that goes with it, 0, 22, which is here, uh, 320, so if that's 500, approximate about where 300 would be, um, that's 250, so it would be closer to 250, and again, that's going to 20, so about to there. You're not really doing these so much for accuracy unless you're plotting them on a computer. 500 goes to about 13 or 213, so that of course would be in between 12 and 14. One thousand goes to seven. So six to seven. And two thousand goes to six. So two thousand would be right here about where that line is at. And so that would be your scatter plot. Of course, if you're talking about your uh, correlation, this is a negative correlation because the lines are obviously going down. You really don't want to get into the R, and you don't really have to worry about the R until you get into um, deeper levels of math and teachers start to show you how to program those into your graphing calculators. We could do that, but again, with the um, remote distance learning that we have, I don't really want to 
spend a lot of time doing things that really I can't teach you for real. So um, another one, family size, income. Again, whatever's listed first goes on the bottom. Whatever is listed second is on the side. It's your dependent variable. Family size goes from one to four, so I guess it's easier just to go one, two, three, four. Again, you don't need to go all the way across, but it does help to get as much across this thing as possible, not go one, two, three, four, and stay here because you're not really using the space of the actual part. Your income goes anywhere from 30000 to 60000 so uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So maybe if we go 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Okay, so we'll go 20 then. 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. And so the hardest part about scatter plots, if you're making them, is just arranging your um, your numbers there and try and make sure you use as much as possible. One goes to about 33,265 so 30, that's 35, it'd be below 35 so somewhere around here. Two goes to 44,000 that's pretty close to 45,000 so 2, 40, about 45 again you're not in my class you're not going to get marked for being slightly off you just need to be at least in the area. Three goes to 50,500 so again three should be at 50 Typically, if you use gridded paper or lined paper, it'll help also because that way you know your dots above that and lined up with this one. And then four goes to close close to fifty thousand or close to sixty thousand. So four would be slightly below sixty, so somewhere around there. And again, if you look at the correlation, it's going in an upward direction. It would be called a positive correlation, and that's what you would be looking at. The line of best fit is found by approximating its location, then choosing two points and writing an equation. Uh, is again, that's something we did in 2.4 where we did x, x1, y1, um, x2, y2, plugged it into the y equals mx plus b. I'm actually going to do this once we make the scatter plot. So you have year and number of employees. So years goes down here, and number of employees is here. Years go from 2002 to 2008, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 0, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which I think is what I'm going to do. Again, at least it kind of gets me across to the other side. And number of employees goes from 4 to 25 people. So let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Nope, there's a bunch of weird different ways. I think what I'm going to do, and it's rare that you use a number like this, but again, as long as you um, are consistent on your number, don't go 367. And as long as your value makes sense, like don't put 29 here because obviously it'd be closer to 30. Don't put 26 here or don't put 20. Um, yeah, don't don't put 25 up here because it'd be closer to 24 or whatever it might be. So making our scatter plot, 2002 goes to 4. So 2 goes to somewhere slightly above 3. 2003 goes to 7. So we go to 2003, we go slightly above 6. 2004 goes to 11. So 4 up to right below 12, somewhere around there. 2005 goes to 14. So slightly below... 15. Again, I'm looking at an angle, so forgive me if my accuracy is off. Uh, 2006 is 20, so slightly below 21. 2007 is 23, so like right below 24. And 2008 is 25, so slightly above 24. And again, if you're looking at that, that would be the... Um, part that we really want to focus on there is that it is um, going in a positive direction. So what you can do when you do a line of best fit, give me a moment to pause my video, I gotta find a ruler or something. Okay, there are no rulers in the Bradley household right now, but looking at it, if I were to use these two points up here, these last two points, does that go through the material? The answer is no. If I were to use 
um, these two points? No. But again, what you want to do is you want to find a line that has a little bit above and a little bit below. And you pretty much would pick two points and actually use those two points. I'm going to use, looking at that, it seems like it would be these two. And again, that's just me kind of guessing a line of best fit. Your graphing calculator actually takes the numbers and finds it. But again, here's what we do. I am using the fourth and fifth point. That means I am using these two points here. That is my x, that is my y, and so what I do first is I do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is 14 minus 11 over, well, I guess it would just be 1, 2005 minus 2004, which is 3 over 1 or 3. So based off of that, my rate of change is 3. I then do my y equals mx plus b, and you're going to have to do this on at least one of your questions here. I'm going to pick the top point here, so y would be 11 equals 3 times 2004 plus b. Uh, 11 equals uh, 6012 plus b. Subtracting 6012 would be... Um, well, I shouldn't know that answer. Be 6001. Negative 6001 has to be. Sorry, I have to do this, but I don't want to mess that up. Yeah. And so my mark here would be y equals um, 3x minus 6001. And what should happen is if I were to plug in one of these numbers, it should be pretty close. So if I put 25 in here, let's see. I'm sorry if I put 2008 in here because that's my X. So if I did 3 times 2008 minus 6001, notice that I get the answer of 23, which is pretty close to what I'm supposed to have. If I do the same thing with 2007, I get 20, which again is around where it should be. So your your line of expectation, I'm just going to draw a cheap one here. It pretty much is just telling you what you would expect. So if I was wondering what's going to happen about 2009, I could look at the line of best fit and say I should be right around 24, 25 um, employees or whatever it might be. So again, that's really what how all that stuff works. Um, there is one more question that you need to be ready for, or not need to be ready for, but that you might see, and that's usually like ACT stuff. Uh, which equation could be a prediction equation for the data points shown in the scatter plot below? I'm probably not going to find the right answer, but I will go through the process that you can use on multiple choice tests because on a multiple choice test, typically they don't need you to go through the whole five minute process I just went through. They need you to use your common sense. So, for example, I see that this is a positive correlation. I know from work that the number attached to x is slope. This is not a negative slope, should not be a. Here's another thing. I know that this number here from graphing lines represents the y-intercept. The y-intercept is definitely not at negative 200. Can't be that one. If I draw my line of best fit, that is where I would say it's probably going to be, it could be 5x and 600, who knows. But like I said, I guess the best way to do it would be to look at this thing. Um, if I was down to these two, take these two points, figure out what the rate of change was, and one of those is going to be pretty close to 2, or it's going to be pretty close to 5. Uh, again, I'm not going to get into all that because, for the most part, since I can't be there to work it out with you, um, I don't want to waste more minutes kind of going over that. But just a general strategy again, the first thing I did, whenever you do a multiple choice test, is if you don't know how to answer it, just eliminate things that don't make sense. It's not a negative slope. The y-intercept is not a negative and so therefore it has to be either B or C and again you could kind of look at um, the numbers 1000 comma 150 and 300 comma 1200 whatever those that relationship is actually I guess I could do that so 300 now I'd be my Y's because my Y's are here so I would do 1200 minus 1000 divided by that step would be 150 and notice that that's pretty close to 2, which means, obviously, it's not going to be 5, so it would be B. But again, go ahead and check out your homework. I don't think it has nearly as much as that other stuff on it. It's just meant to kind of make sure that you see it so it's in your head whenever you need it. Good luck.